This week, robots crossed a line we didn't think they'd reach this soon. In China, they're brawling in front of live audiences. In living rooms, they're preparing to care for the elderly. And in the United States, they're being fitted with over a hundred sensors to survive chemical attack scenarios. It's not about replacing humans anymore. It's about testing what happens when machines step fully into human roles. So let's talk about it. So first stop, Hangzhou, Zhejiang province. At one minute past midnight on May 26th, China Media Group opened its live stream of the World Robot Competition Mecha Fighting Series. It's the very first sporting event built entirely around full-sized humanoid combat bots. And honestly, it looked like someone spliced an esports broadcast with an MMA pay-per-view. The organizers split the show into showcase rounds and straight-up competitive matches. During the showcase bits, you had robots demoing solo combinations, straight punches, hook punches, even sidekicks and those crowd-pleasing aerial spin kicks. Then came the real bouts. Four human operator teams, each standing behind a control console, piloting their mechanical fighters in tournament brackets. Think Rock him, sock him. If the red and blue plastic guys were over a meter tall and running custom control stacks instead of spring loaded necks. Unitree Robotics, yeah, the same Hangzhou a startup that went viral with its back flipping quadrupeds, served as both tech partner and main supplier for the event. Their flagship humanoid, the Unitree G1, was front and center. Quick specs so you can brag in the group chat 1.32 meters tall, about 35 kilos, and loaded with proprietary high band with actuators, plus enough onboard compute to keep its balance while someone's trying to knock its block off. During the match, you could see the benefits of that hardware. Every time a G1 got swept, it scrambled back to its feet in roughly the same time a featherweight boxer would pop up after a slip. Now, none of these machines were autonomous gladiators. Each bot had a real human cornerman on the sticks making split-second tactical calls. Chen Xiyun from Unitree's marketing crew described it as human-machine collaboration. The algorithms handle stabilizing, collision detection, torque limiting, all that under the hood stuff, while the person decides whether to throw a jab or pivot out of danger. For researchers, this is catnip because a fighting ring is a brutal stress test. High impacts, rapid shifts in center of mass, adversarial interference. Industrial robotics people obsess over stability margins at two kilometers an hour. These devs are holding margin while their creation is eating hooks. Shim Feng, ex-dean at Sense Times Intelligence Industry Research Institute, was ringside pointing out exactly that. In his words, boxing demands full body coordination plus serious upper limb agility, and it exposes weak spots in battery endurance and actuator durability faster than any treadmill demo. Fail and you faceplant on a public live stream. Succeed and you drive an entire subfield forward because the same control loops that handle a spinning back kick also help a warehouse bot recover from a pallet collision. Add the media buzz and you've got a textbook train through competition pipeline. Engineers learn fast, talent gets noticed, investors open wallets. Speaking of wallets, China's Institute of Electronics is forecasting an 870 billion yuan humanoid market by 2030. That's roughly 120 billion United States dollars. When numbers get that big, one event is never enough. Organizers already teased an even bigger showdown in December down in Shenzhen, hosted by Engine AI and featuring full-size mechs, which implies heavier frames and maybe autonomous rounds. Unitree, AG Bot, Engine AI, Booster Robotics, they're all gunning for that next gen title. And if you're wondering whether any of this matters beyond streaming spectacle, remember the recent milestones. Chinese humanoids have solved Rubik's Cubes, assisted in delicate medical procedures, even finished marathon courses. The ring is just another checkpoint on the road to multi purpose embodied AI. Now, while those bots were busy learning how to fight, another kind of machine quietly learned how to edit your entire TikTok. Because apparently, no one's safe from automation, not even video editors. So Deep Agent just dropped a new update, and it's kind of insane. Basically, you can now type a single sentence, literally just a topic, and it builds an entire TikTok or short around it. Not just clips thrown together, I'm talking fully timed visuals, music, transitions, captions, everything. It handles all the pacing too, so it actually feels like something a real editor made. 
If you've ever wanted to make those quick top 10 countdowns, this thing does it automatically. It adds the numbers, lines them up with the beat, and keeps it all moving fast so people don't scroll away. You don't even need footage. Deep Agent pulls it in for you. They've also added avatars now. You just paste your script, pick a character, and it lip syncs with surprisingly good voiceovers. Einstein's mind-blowing theory in 30 seconds? Buckle up. It can even add background music that fits the mood. And the best part? Everything comes out already formatted for TikTok reels or shorts, no black bars, no awkward cropping. Home to 25% of all marine species, despite covering less than 1% of the ocean floor. I've seen people turning blog posts into mini promos, travel notes into cinematic reels, and even teachers making quick explainers. It's kind of wild how far this thing's come. Oh, and they're running a weekly contest now. Like two and a half grand if your video is the best that week. So yeah, messing around with it might actually be worth something. If you're someone who's been putting off short form content because editing's a pain, this might be your moment. Just prompt it and see what happens. So hit the link in the description and give it a spin. All right, quick gear shift, but still in Shenzhen. Yubi Tech Robotics. You probably know them for their industrial line that fetches around 100K per unit and already works at Foxconn and BYD plants. Well, at the Beyond Expo in Macau, their chief brand officer, Michael Tam, finally dropped numbers on the consumer model they've been hinting at. Price tag, 20,000 United States dollars. Launch window, sometime later this year, with about 1,000 units in the first production wave and an ambition to crank output tenfold by 2026. Before you ask, yes, 20 grand sounds steep until you consider the audience they're chasing, households coping with China's rapidly aging demographic bulge. According to Tam, a home companion robot that can perform a narrow set of caregiving and basic chore tasks, think reminder prompts, light pick and place, maybe mobility assistance, already has a viable addressable market when the alternative is paying human carers in an economy facing labor shortages. The big caveat he stressed is that a fully versatile Rosie the Robot Butler is still years away because we haven't nailed general purpose manipulation or affordable long duration power yet. But a partially capable helper that sells for a fifth of Ubitech's current factory model, that he says is doable right now. Naturally, eyebrows went up because Tesla's Optimus roadmap points to a similar time frame. Elon Musk claimed last year that Optimus could hit living rooms by 2026 with a sticker price between 20 and 30 grand. UB Tech sliding in at the lower end gives them a narrative edge, though they're playing catch up on hype. Financially, they're feeling the heat, a 1.1 yuan loss last year, and a stock that sank 45% over 12 months in Hong Kong. Tam actually leaned into that, arguing that white-hot competition weeds out weak players and ultimately strengthens the sector. Kind of a brutal mindset, but consistent with Beijing's push. Xi Jinping has been hammering robotics and other critical tech as national priorities, and local governments are throwing grants at companies that show real progress. So Yubi Tech is basically betting that volume plus consumer branding will stanch the bleeding. If they ship 1,000 units this year, ramp to 10,002, and keep per unit margins healthy, they might pull out of that nosedive. More importantly, a home humanoid at 20 grand undercuts the psychological barrier where early adopters start thinking, my car was more expensive, maybe I can justify a robot nurse for mom. Once that conversation becomes normal, the leap from factory floors to living rooms is no longer science fiction. Now let's hop across the Pacific to Dugway Proving Ground in Utah, because the United States Army just signed a $1.7 million check for something that sounds like it walked off a Tom Clancy cover, the Porton Man Robotic Test System. Unlike the boxing bots or UB Tech's companion, this machine isn't here to be flashy or charming. It's a mannequin that mimics a soldier's gait, joints, and posture right down to anthropometric survey data, and it's sprinkled with over a hundred embedded sensors. Its single job is to wear chemical and biological protective suits while technicians pump nasty agents into a stainless steel chamber, then gather high resolution leak maps. The British Defense Science and Technology Laboratory originally built the idea, naming it after Porton Down, their famous CBRN research site. Until now, the United Kingdom had the only full ensemble test platform of this type. The United States Joint Program Executive Office for Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear Defense wasn't thrilled about relying on overseas time slots. 
so they commissioned a domestic unit with an option to buy a second. Delivery is penciled in for 18 to 24 months, and the West Desert Test Center is already upgrading its multiple chemical agent chamber, basically a giant stainless steel coffin with plumbing for sarin simulants, to fit the newcomer. <laughs> what makes Porton Man so valuable is holistic testing. Historically, militaries tested respirators, gloves, and suits in isolation, but threats don't care about modular certifications. They look for the weakest seam in the whole ensemble. Porton Man lets analysts evaluate complete loadouts, mask hood, overgarment, boots, gloves, while the robot cycles through walking, running, kneeling, maybe even going prone if a valve slips during a sprint or a sleeve gap forms while raising a rifle, those 100 plus sensors will flag it in real time and because the platform can repeat movements precisely, side-by-side -side comparisons between older gear and next-gen suits get rigorous statistical power. The Army highlighted the project during National Robotics Week as part of a bigger narrative on human meter teaming. Throwing this mannequin into the mix alongside autonomous ground vehicles and AI targeting aids underscores that robotics isn't just about frontline performance. It's about keeping soldiers alive in environments too dangerous or expensive to test with humans. And yeah, 1.7 million might sound small compared to a fighter jet program, but for research equipment, that's a decent chunk, especially when there's budget space for a twin unit after the first proves its worth. So now the question is, are we watching the rise of a new sport or the rehearsal for something much bigger? Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if this kept your attention. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.